Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about drawing, naming and identifying acyl chlorides. So acyl chlorides, which are also known as acid chlorides in some textbooks, are very similar to and derived from carboxylic acids. So just like carboxylic acids, they have two different things connected to the one carbon. In this case, it is a carbonyl group and a chlorine atom. And just like carbonyl, carboxylic acid groups, the acyl chloride group is always on the end of the chain and is given carbon number one. So we can use it in a condensed structural formula, showing it as COCl, usually on the end of a chain. Um, we name them as something or other oil chloride. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. And these compounds are very, very reactive. And so acyl chlorides are often used as intermediates in reaction processes. If you want to turn compound A into compound B, but that doesn't always work so easily, you can turn compound A into an acyl chloride and then turn that into compound B, and it often makes for a much better reaction. Okay, so here we have a very simple example of an acyl chloride. Now to name this, we're going to start the same way we do all of our naming. We're going to identify the longest carbon chain, which is here, and that is three carbons long. With three carbons, we are going to call it prop. And because there are single bonds between the carbon atoms, we're going to put in an AN. Now we have the functional group on the end, which is this chunk here. And because we have that, we are going to finish this off with oil chloride. Propanoil chloride. And that's simply the name. Now we could look at something slightly more complicated. So let's just have a quick look at something there. Okay. Again, one of the biggest mistakes people make with acyl chlorides is that they forget to count the carbon with the actual acyl chloride group on it when they're numbering things. So with this one here, we're going to look at this. Again, we're going to find the longest carbon chain. Here we go. Four carbons. Four carbons is butte. Single bonds. AN. Acyl chloride group. Here we are. So oil chloride, and finally we have the methyl group here, which is on carbon 2, because this group here is always carbon 1, 2. So 2 methyl butanoil chloride, and thus we put together our molecule. So acyl chlorides can be readily identified by their reaction with water. And they are said to react violently with water. That's the generally acceptable phrase. Now what that can look like, hissing, spitting, bubbling, fuming gases. I highly recommend you have a look up on YouTube and find some videos of acyl chlorides reacting with water. Um, sadly, it's not one of those things we get to do in the lab at school very often because... As I say here, this reaction produces HCl gas. For some reason, health and safety rules mean that if I produce HCl gas in the lab and you guys breathe it in, I get fairly well told off. Okay, so we can identify the HCl gas is produced, however, if we hold some damp blue litmus paper above the reaction, as that gas is spitting and being given off, it will turn the blue litmus paper red. Now the product of the reaction, the organic product, the acyl chloride, turns back into a carboxylic acid via a substitution reaction. So let's just show that. Okay, so if we take our um, acyl chloride, in this case I have some ethanoil chloride, and we're going to react that with some water, then we're going to end up replacing that chlorine group with an OH, which is going to make 
ethanoic acid. So we are simply turning the acyl chloride back into the carboxylic acid. And this is a substitution reaction, of course, because as with all substitution reactions, we are replacing one atom or group of atoms with another atom or group of atoms. The second product that gets formed in this is HCl, and because this is a wildly exothermic reaction, it gets produced as a gas, which is kind of the problem with doing it in the lab. Now, acyl chlorides, like I say, are commonly used as reaction intermediates. And in particular, they can react with ammonia or primary or secondary amines to form amides. And they can react with alcohols to form esters. And both of those are condensation reactions. I'm not going to talk about those right now because I have a whole separate video which I'm going to make, or will be available hopefully very shortly, on condensation reactions. So thank you for watching today, and I hope to see you again soon.